and welcome back for another painting video today we are going to be tackling lenny from malifo this is the second edition sculpt of lenny holding his trusty piglet and big whacking stick and we're going to be doing this primarily with the airbrush and trying to get him done quickly but nicely we're also going to go over how to create his base so the first thing that i want to tackle is laying down a nice base coat of screamer pink over the entirety of Lenny's skin. We're going to use this as an undercoat for further green layers. It adds a lot of saturation and in the shadows it adds a little bit of blood under the skin, that kind of effect. So let's get that knocked out first and then we'll move on. I do apologize, some of the color in this video may be a little bit off but the technique comes through and you'll see the final shots at the end. And we're going to have to correct a little bit of gap that I have in the model. Some of the seams are not completely filled here and some of them are a little bit messy so let's take a look at that first. I'm gonna get out some of this Bondic material. It is a UV reactive plastic of some sort, resin, I don't know, who knows. It's good stuff though. You can see I'm applying a little bit to the back of the piglet here. That might be a little bit dark. We're also gonna get some around the head of the piglet and a few other spots. I'm gonna use a latex shaping tool that's normally used for sculpting to kind of feather it out and smooth out where it's at before hitting it with the UV light. The UV light will cure the Bondic within three to four seconds and then we can kind of cut or shave it down. I don't recommend trying to sand it but sanding the plastic around it and filling those gaps might work if it's a small seam. But in this case, we're gonna have to do a little bit of work. Some of that's being done off screen. You can see I'm using some jewelry tools here as well to help grind things down and smooth stuff out. Again, sanding the Bondic itself, not a great idea, but the plastic around it to fill a seam, absolutely. Normally this would be done before we paint, but usually a lot of things kind of show through when you hit it with primer or the first layer or two of paint and you really don't like the way it looks. Uh, Bondic is a great, great uh, gap filler at this stage of the paint process since it will kind of latch down into the paint and everything underneath. And I haven't had any problems with it yet. So moving right along, let's get back to that Screamer Pink and adding a little bit of black before we add the Screamer Pink right back over it. All right, now that we've got a nice pink gremlin, I'm gonna go back over this with some Vallejo model color flat green. Take this very light, and we're gonna take this mostly from the top. We want to preserve as much of that undertone as possible in the shadowed regions and the unlit regions of his skin. And I'm actually gonna miss the top of his head here on the first pass, but we'll get back to it later. And for the final pass on the airbrushing steps for his skin, we're going to bust out some P3 Moldy Ochre. This is a nice yellow color. You can substitute this in with a lot of other colors and paints as well, but I really do like the Moldy Ochre through an airbrush.
can see that we're leaving that green to really come through on the ochre. We're actually gonna come back to the skin again later in the process. But for now, looking great. Next part I'm gonna hit, it's gonna be the piglet. I'm gonna get out some secret weapon rubber highlight from the rubber acrylic weathering set. And I will use this as kind of a mid-tone on the piglet skin. What you may have noticed is we started with Screamer Pink on the piglet while we were working up Lenny himself, but now we've actually started diverging the colors. We didn't add the green to the piglet, so we're adding this rubber highlight as a mid-tone, which brings the skin tone down to a very neutral point. This is going to give us a very subdued tone. Add some more flesh tone into the piglet skin again by using some harvester flesh from scale 75. Finalize the shading a little bit by using some Kerberg Crimson from Citadel through the airbrush with a little bit of airbrush thinner. The thinner will help it dry a little bit quicker. So use a lot of air here. Make sure you're not pushing the shade around. It is very thin and prone to getting pushed around or coffee stained if you happen to give it just too much air or don't allow it to dry. Bring this into the shadow regions around the piglet skin, kind of where the darker area meets the more skin tone, and you can actually bring a little bit into the harvester flesh if you feel like it got a little bit too pale. You can add a little bit of Kerberg Crimson to Lenny as well. Uh, put that in his skin uh, under his armpits, uh, under his belly, and I'm gonna add a little bit to his face there. I really want his face to come through as uh, a little bit pinkish. So at this point we've finished up all of our airbrushing on the skin tones. Let's go ahead and base coat with our traditional brush. I'm going to use some dark warm gray from Pro Acryl here on Lenny's shirt as well as the band around his big stick which we will base coat in using some secret weapon dark wood. Then we'll progress onto the pants and use some dark golden brown from Pro Acryl to base coat those in. Alright, before I get too far, I'm going to go back and hit the top of Lenny's head here. I'm going to be putting in a little bit of our Screamer Pink, a little bit of our Flat Green. We're actually going to wait on the Moldy Ochre until later. You will see why. 
So I normally don't paint the bases on my videos, but for this one I figured I'd show off what I do for my Malifaux bases. You can see I'm actually just putting paint right on the base here since I know I'll need a lot of it. And I'm mixing in a little bit of water by drawing it in from my water well from the side and spreading around a bit of this dark golden brown from Pro Acryl here. We're actually going to reuse this on Lenny. I'm going to use a bit of our Magimix. This is a one to one to one mix of Nuln Oil, Agrax Earthshade, and Lamian Medium from Citadel. And I'm actually going to get some of the areas where the shirt meets skin and kind of darken those in a little bit here with that Magimix. All right, I fixed my camera settings, I think, and we're now applying through the airbrush a little bit of Secret Weapon Handle Wood. This also appears in the Secret Weapon Wood Acrylics, and this mid-tone is really awesome. We're gonna hit the ends of the stick, mostly, just to make them look like raw wood, and a little bit on the top, just to give it a little bit of a shade. going to get really thick with our Magimix here. You can see I'm coating the entirety of the straw hat that we have put down golden brown on. And we are going to hit the entirety of the whacking stick as well. I'll go back to the handle wood that we still have in our airbrush. You can see the wash is starting to dry, but I'm pushing it around a little bit. That's okay. I just wanted to a little bit more of that to the ends of the stick now that we have the wash down. Um, this also kind of pushes the wash around a little bit. So we'll add some of that same Magimix to our base as well. Um, get it on there nice and thick and then what I'm going to do is take this paper towel and dab off some of the excess from the top there and just let the rest of it dry on the base. And once it is dry what I'm going to do is take a little bit of Intensity Green from Scale 75 and then apply a little bit of that with some water on the entirety of the base. All right, now that that's taken care of, let's load our moldy ochre back into our airbrush and we're gonna hit the hat with a little bit of shading here, make it look a little bit more straw, as well as hit the very top of Lenny's head. I try to hit a few spots where I think it could use a little bit more of this ochre. That includes the tips of its ears, as well as a few spots on the skin. Something to note here as I'm working on the hat, you'll notice I've taken off the protector so my needle is exposed. That helps me see where the paint should be going a little bit easier if I can see the actual needle. Um, sometimes that helps people, sometimes it doesn't. It obviously exposes your needle to potential damage. And you'll also notice I'm kind of spraying away from the model for the most part. I'm kind of spraying down the brim of the hat to get around the edges of it. And then to get at the very underside, I kind of spray up and away from the model so it doesn't blow back into his face. Uh, let's use a little bit of that dark warm gray from Pro Acryl once again. We'll hit the bandage on his arm as well as the band of metal on the wagon stick. Speaking of the log that he's carrying, one thing that I skipped and is not well shown in this tutorial, uh, the bottom of the log has been shaded with a little bit of the same green that we used on his skin, that Vallejo flat green. Um, you can use inks, you can use paints, etc. It gives it a bit of that mossy look, and I like bringing that into my Malifaux minis. Alright, we're missing a base coat here. Lenny's pants, we are going to apply a little bit of burnt sienna to, to base coat this in, and then once we're done, 
we'll wash it down with some of our Magic Mix in the same fashion that we wash down a lot of the rest of the mini. So for Lenny's face here, I'm going to break out a few things and kind of mix and match and play around a little bit with the colors. I'm going to bring in some Screamer Pink into his ears, along his lips, and around his eyes. Then we're going to use a little bit of Emperor's Children Pink mixed with a little bit of Spring Green to make a bit of a highlight. Remember, reds and greens being complementaries make great highlights and shades with each other. And just kind of play around with this until it looks like what you want. Basically, you want kind of pale pink flesh showing up around on the outer extremities of his lips and more of a pinky tone around the recesses like the orbitals and the inner parts of the lips and stuff like that. Um, just keep working it back and forth, very thin coats. You'll notice I kinda, kinda keep going a little bit high, a little bit low, and it takes some time, it takes some practice, but once you've done that, you can go ahead and hit the eyes, the actual square of the eyes, and I'm gonna use a little bit of bright warm gray when we get to it. So at this point, I've finished up the face, thinking it's looking pretty good, but it looks a little bit brighter than the rest of the skin tones that we've already brought in on Lenny. So let's go back to our moldy ochre and bring up those greens just a little bit more into the yellow range. So you can see how much that pops as soon as I apply it again to our green skin tone. It doesn't make it not green, but it does make it a lot more yellowish. Uh, some of the options you could look at here to add a little bit of extra extra panache here. You could potentially uh, freehand a tattoo. You could add freckles along his shoulders or his face or even his belly. Um, there's a lot of different things you can just kind of add to spice up large areas of skin, but Lenny luckily is very muscular and gives us a lot of detail to work with and add shades and highlights to here. Don't ever be afraid to go back in with the airbrush and play around and add a little bit more color and tone here. Obviously it gets harder and harder to avoid overspray as you go, but it is great practice for doing more detailed work on your miniatures. I'm enjoying the overall effect that we're getting so far on both Lenny and his piglet, so let's kind of skip ahead a little bit. I'm going to be applying some more Magimix here to both his stick and his pants to set those up. Some slight touch-ups here real quick. I'm going to add a little bit of that burnt sienna into the headband here on Lenny. We'll move it right along. Alright, let's hit the base again. We're going to add a little bit of our burnt sienna over the top of it. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to kind of go at it from the side, so I'm just hitting the more raised ridges here, and it kind of mutes down a little bit as it dries, as most acrylic paints do. But then I'm also going to go in and add a little bit of moldy ochre to that burnt sienna and do the same thing over the very tips of stuff. You'll notice that I go back and forth a little bit, so let's skip ahead. Alright, let's go through some touch-up work and some details. I'm going to use a little bit of our burnt sienna in the airbrush to hit the ends of the log to give them a little bit more of a heartwood look in the center, just to darken that up a little bit.
I'm gonna bring in a little bit of pale pink from Pro Acryl and a little bit of bright warm gray as well. And we're gonna mix those together a little bit on the piglet and add a little bit of highlighting as well as picking out his little hoofs. Now we'll load that bright warm gray into our airbrush and do a little bit of modulation on Lenny's t-shirt here. So we're not gonna make this especially bright or white, but we're gonna make it kind of a light dingy gray. I go back in with the light warm gray with the hand brush here and you'll notice I actually get a little bit of overspray and a little bit of overbrushing here on the green skin. Uh, I'll, I'll blend that back in with a little bit of our Magimix and a little bit of flat green that we used before but for now just kind of bring out some of the ridges where the uh, where the shirt has kind of rolled up a little bit, the, uh, the hems, etc. or any of the tears that you might see depending on the model you're working on. After applying a little bit of that Magimix over the shirt again, we'll let that dry and while that dries, we're actually gonna go back in over the pants here and add some more of our Burnt Sienna over the Burnt Sienna that we had washed with our Magimix earlier. So just kind of bring out the lighter areas, the flatter areas where there should be more light and less dinge, build those up. Now those pants are looking a little bit more solid again, I'm going to bring in a little bit of our moldy ochre into that burnt sienna and go right back over the pants picking out more of the folds, some of the seams, some of the hems again, and then we can blend those back down with a little bit of that burnt sienna if they're a little too strong. And after I'm happy with the pants here, uh, you can bring in a little bit of Magimix if you want to add some shade back in, but I'm also going to hit the ends of the stick with a little bit of Magimix. One of the things that I'll point out before we finish off this video is that I failed to bring out his teeth, which I would touch with a little bit of a spot highlight of bright warm gray, as well as detailing out his belt and the band around the log. Uh, I actually fixed the log and the teeth here and the band around the belt uh, I, I just made sure was nice and contrasty. 
All right, I will make sure to hit those teeth after the fact, and those will be in the final pictures. Meanwhile, I'm going to go back in with some of our flesh tone that we used before on the piglet and smooth out those highlights that I added. They're a little bit rough, so what I can use them for is a nice base tone and a base highlight for going over with the airbrush. You can always smooth things back out with the airbrush. It's one of the nice qualities of it. All right, final touch. I'm gonna get out a little bit of our black brown and mix that with a little bit of burnt sienna. And we're actually gonna stipple and kind of fade in a few things. I'm gonna wash his feet with this brown paint to get them looking kind of muddy and dirty. And then I'm going to stipple some brown spots. You can see that here onto his t-shirt along the bottom. Uh, I don't really have a very messy style that I do, but I do have a bit of a dingy style that I like bringing out with these guys. So a little bit of dirt and mud since they've been kind of stomping around in the, uh, in the old pigsty kind of adds a little bit of extra character. Now these, these colors should roughly match what we have on the base already since we're bringing in some of that burnt sienna. The black brown is a nice color to mix that with because that will give that a little bit of strength. It won't look so washed out. So just go over that. However, uh, however dark you, you want to make that. Alright, just a few touch-ups here and there, going over the shirt again with a little bit of that bright warm gray, and I'm going to hit the top of that band on the stick. Uh, that bright warm gray is also what I'm going to bring in along the top of his teeth, and recall if you need to hit his eyes, a little bit of that bright warm gray over the pink red tone that we applied earlier will make that pop out and look fairly organic. I think he's looking pretty good at this point. I want to hit it with a bit of a varnish and we're going to have to attach it to our base before we do that. I'm also going to add a couple of tufts to our base before we apply the varnish. And after varnishing, here's our final product. It's a little bit shinier, a little bit flatter, but he's looking pretty good and that will flatten out just a little bit more. This is kind of a fresh varnish, but if you enjoyed this video, thank you. Please come back next week. We'll have another great video for you. Catch me on the weekend on Twitch. And until then, enjoy painting.